What is up y'all? We are back with another slide guide and I am going to overload you with as many backside 180 and 360 slide tips as I can think of. And you can take them in whatever flow or order you want. I just want to help you not see the trick, but understand the trick. Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, surf's up, dude. Like... <laughs> Now we're gonna start with the backside 180. Make sure you've watched both the front side and the back side tutorials before this video. Okay, so my favorite tip when it comes to backside 180 slides is this weight shuffle between your front and your back leg. Almost like a pop, but you're not quite slapping your tail all the way down. You know, very quickly lift up your front leg and push down on your back leg. You then immediately push back down on your front leg. And as you do that, you push out on your back leg using your toes and that's going to unweight those back wheels so you can slide them easily across the pavement. Now I know having this type of engagement with your tail could be new to some people so what I would recommend for people building this skill is to start with tic tacking right? Start by developing a relationship with that back tail to lift up that front wheel. So you're going to be lifting some weight up off your front foot slash leg, putting some weight down on your back leg slash foot, just a little bit, not too much. And while you do that, you're still going to need to hold some pressure over that front leg to balance that lift. And you can do this in different patterns to create different movements, and different, different tricks or maneuvers. All right, let's move on. If you remember from the last videos, when you're sliding, you want to keep your weight on your front leg. That'll help you complete the first 180 here, but just remember when you're going for that switch 180 to bring it back around, you wanna switch up that weight. Put that weight on the opposite leg. Always put that weight on your leading leg when you're doing a slide. Here's the setup for pushing out with your toes. So I'll kinda of have that ball of the foot on the board with my toes kinda of hanging off. And that kinda of gives me that leverage point. And this is exactly why we've added such deep curvature on that back foot slot on the Viper board. If you know my style of, of riding, you know, I, I like to get just about as intense as I can with sliding. I just find it super fun. So that's why we were doing such deep curvature there. Okay, so let's say you've made the slide and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, now I'm going backwards. What am I supposed to do? So this is when it becomes a pretty good time to start thinking about which way you're leaning. Now when you're approaching that first 180 slide, obviously you're leaning over your toes. You need to start thinking about which way you're going to lean next. And you lean back just enough to kind of switch back around. That lean is going to be what helps you go from you know 180 slides to fluid 360 slides that you could be doing along a bank super quick from using your toes and like i said we're going to be now using our heels to do that correction slide now this is another reason we made the curvature notching of the viper so deep when you're going into these twist slides or switch slides this is when it becomes super fun to fit that heel into that notch into that groove which not only helps you lock into the rail but it helps you angle that heel and foot and helps you find different points of leverage along the rail so you can snap push and lock in in different ways as you twist your slides in all sorts of crazy ways okay so we've talked about some good tips now but there's plenty more but before we get into our next tip i do want to mention that you might see me lifting my front or even lifting my back wheels to do these slides or switch correction slides but you don't have to do that. Once you develop muscle memory for these tips, you can force your way into a 360 slide without having any of your wheels leave the ground. And it also really depends on what wheels you're using. Yeah, for learning these, I would really recommend the Pal Peralta Rat Bones. They are 90A with a 60 millimeter diameter and a 44 millimeter contact patch. They're gonna slide super nice, but with that wider contact patch, they're gonna have some decent grip to them. So you can kind of develop that control and, and not 
you know, completely slide out and hurt yourself. Is if you're gonna try these slides with grippy wheels, such as surf skate love wheels, roundhouse wheels on the carver boards, you're gonna have a really hard time and you're gonna really need to get aggressive with it. So that's why I recommend these more slidier wheels. Now, if you want something that's even slidier than the rat bones, I would probably recommend to get the Pal Peralta Dragon Wheels, which is a completely different formula that is easier to slide as far as the urethane used. So it's really only a little bit harder at that 93A. The ones that I use are 60 millimeters, so same height. It's, I believe, a 39 millimeter contact patch so it is quite a bit more narrow. Now the reason you might want more narrow wheels is because with that more narrow contact patch, there's less urethane to grip you to the ground, so you're gonna slide out easier. When you're trying to develop that muscle memory and you're trying to do fluid 360 slides, you don't wanna have your wheels making it harder for you, all right? You, don't, you wanna have everything be as smooth as possible so you can develop that muscle memory consistently and quickly. And that is why I harp over wheels. The next tip would have to be using the rotational movement of your shoulders, which sometimes can just look like your arms swinging around and different combos to perform different types of 360 slides. There's a lot of different styles of it doesn't have to be a super intense, stylish swinging of your arms. It can be as simple as using your trailing elbow hard to swing with that back leg. Now that's a nice swing, but it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to close off my shoulders coming out of it so I can ride away nicely. And another good swing, but I'm also whipping that front shoulder and not just the trailing shoulder. And I do that for a quicker spin here. And would you look at that, swinging those arms, both arms and shoulders like helicopter propellers. So as you can see, you know, it, there's different combinations in how you can use these tips and depending on how fast you want to spin or what type of spin you're doing. Um, there's no one right way to swing your shoulders. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, as long as you're, you're being intentional about how you use these tips, you're going to have some pretty sweet 360s, I bet. Now I'm only going to talk about one more tip because these have been all the important tips and I don't want to overload with too much information. And that last tip is to use your knees, bending and extending your knees, a lot like with regular slides. I know we talked about that towards the end of the front side slide video. Now, generally speaking, you want to approach with your knees bent. You're going to kind of decompress and extend off those knees into the slide. You can then bend again as you're doing that correction, switch slide, 